Hey guys, and welcome. My name is NG Paradox, and we're here in Crusader Kings 2, a Game of Thrones mod, to celebrate the new season of a Game of Thrones, season 7 in fact. And with that, we're going to start a new series. We're going to play as a character who I think will play a prominent role in the upcoming season. Now, just before we begin, we'd just like to obviously tell you, there will be spoilers of course. So that means if you've not watched the TV show, you've not read the books, please do not watch any further. There will be complete spoilers. Also, if you're not up to date, you must be completely up to date on your knowledge. Um, but yes. Also, if you've only watched a TV show and you've not read the books, uh, this mod is based upon the books. That does mean there'll be spoilers for the books. So, for example, there are some storylines and some characters which are only in the books and they're quite big, actually, that they have a big effect on the story. So if you do plan to read the books and you've only watched a TV show, you don't want to be spoiled for that. That's something to keep in mind. Now, hopefully those people are gone. We can jump right in to the new series. We're going to play in as Daenerys Targaryen. Now, Daenerys Targaryen, I've actually not done a series, as I say, which is kind of crazy. Daenerys Stormborn, Breaker of Chains, Mother of Dragons... Queen of Marine, Lady of Titles. She, she has a ridiculous amount of titles. Um, it's kind of become a running joke, I think, for a lot of people online. But yeah, I would not want to be the one who has to write out her letters every time and put all her titles at the end. Ugh, that would just be a horrible job, wouldn't it? But yes. So we're playing as Daenerys Targaryen. Can we reclaim what's rightfully mine by birthright? We'll have to wait and see. Hopefully we can. Now, if you're new to my channel, I like to normally make my decisions on events and how we kind of gain power based upon my character's traits. I kind of like to roleplay as them in this manner. Now, with Danny, we're not going to be doing that specifically. We're going to be playing as her. Now, because of the books and TV show, we know her character quite well. So I'm going to be choosing what I think she would choose, not necessarily from the traits. Though, obviously, as she gets older, her traits will change, and maybe she will change. Maybe we'll take that into account. Now, this is what she does have, though. She has ambitious. I could see that, definitely. Proud. She's definitely proud. Authoritative. Just. Temperate. Trusting. I guess she is a little more trusting than the average person, yeah. Uh, liberator. She's widowed. Ah. Drogo. My sun and stars. You are gone from us. Died com Well, I mean, he didn't die comatose in bed. She smothered him. But we'll, we'll, I guess that's what she's told people. <laughs> um, we are attractive and we are quick. So there we go. What do you guys think? Do you agree with these traits? Do you disagree? I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comment section. Uh, her skills look pretty good overall. Most of them are above, or around or above 10. That's pretty good. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do with her. She seems to have something with the treasury. She has Daenerys crown. A crown wart in the shape of a three-headed dragon. The coils are yellow gold, the wings are silver, the head's carved from jade, and ivory and onyx. Monthly prestige and vassal opinion. Okay, pretty cool. like seeing that. Okay, what do we have here? House Targaryen has ruled Westeros since Aegon's conquest. We united the seven kingdoms into one. We built King's Landing. We forged the Iron Throne, and we will not let our birthright slip away. Fire and blood, of course. The house words of our Targaryen house. Fire and blood. Now, at the moment, we are in Marine. This is in the scenario um, called A Feast of Crows. So, in the books, that is the second to last book that we've had released. So, it's a little bit before Season 7. So, we're not at Season 7 just yet. But we are in Marine. Um, kind of just taken over. That's kind of the situation we're in now. I'm going to make a decision based upon what she did choose, actually. And we'll see where we go from there. Uh, we'll keep that guy's hand of the king. Master of Laws, we'll make this guy. Master of Arms. Barristan Selmy. Ah, oh, Barristan. Ah, oh, Barristan indeed. Master of Coin. Ago or Karad? Let's make Ago. One of my Dothraki people. Master of Whispers. She does like us, but she's bad and she likes us, Eerie. And Court Physician. This guy, 15 learning, that's not too bad. And you're the only one, okay. 
They're all doing things. Good, good, good. And you do that. Perfect. Let's actually see who's in our court. Let's see if there's any characters that we recognize. Um, Hisdar Zolorak, of course. Uh, the man that Danny does marry. Um, yeah. Not really that interesting. Personally, I don't know why. There's a lot of characters in the Danny storyline. especially. I'm going to base most of my opinions on the books, actually, in this when I'm talking about this. They're quite boring or two-dimensional. I think that's something a lot of people have a trouble with when it comes to Danny's storyline. Um, they kind of feel like the characters are quite dull and they don't feel invested in them. Barristan Selmy, though, on the other hand, I love the Barristan Selmy character. He's probably one of my favorite characters in Marine. Look at that. Formidable fighter, strong, duelist, brave, honor. But he's just such a great character. Really sad with what they did from the TV show. I didn't like it at all, personally. Um, it was obviously a lot more difficult to play with him on the TV show and the books. You know, he kind of comes as um, in a disguise in the beginning to Danny. And you don't realize it's him. And when it's revealed, you're like, oh my god, that's where he went. Ah, oh, I knew he'd gone somewhere. And so I, thought I, was, I actually kind of guessed he'd gone to find Danny. But I didn't realize who he was until he revealed himself. And I was like, damn, I should have seen that. Because I was guessing he was going to go to her. So I really like how they did him in the books, but they couldn't do that in the TV show because obviously, as viewers, we could recognize him much easier. We've got our Dothraki friends who've come with us. Ago, Rakaro, Iri, Jikwe. I'm not sure how to pronounce those. Um, we've got strong Belwas. I think it's Belwas, because was, W-A-S, was, Belwas. But I've not heard it pronounced, actually. And obviously on the TV show, he's not on there. Strong Belwas, I don't know why I like him. I guess he's just, he's just a fun character. Like He is a, a good example of a two-dimensional character. He's not really very deep. He's very two-dimensional, but I still like him. And that's an interesting sign. A lot of two-dimensional characters people don't generally like, but I find a lot of people do like him, even though he is two-dimensional. Um, we got Grey Worm. Uh, not, I don't really hate or like Grey Worm. I don't like what they did with him on the TV show and with Missande. I personally am not fond of that storyline. I feel it's unnecessary. I feel it actually undermines their characters in a bit. I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comment section. I really don't like what they did with those two characters. Um, that That's my opinion, though. Um, we've got Grey Worm, of course, a great leader. Uh, there's Missande. Very young, actually. I, I always forget how young she is. Because on the TV show, she's played by uh, an older girl. So I always forget. She's quick and attractive as well. Wow. Okay. She could develop into a very good young lady. Um, anyone else that I recognize? Ah, Galeo. Galeo is with us right now. Very good marshal, actually. Very good. And other than that, yes, just mostly general people. No Jerome Mormont, of course. I'm guessing Jerome Mormont is off in the Free Cities, which is a shame. I personally really like the character of Jerome Mormont. And now, just so you know, guys, when I say I like a character... It doesn't necessarily mean I like them as a person or I'd want to have drinks of them. It usually means I find them interesting. And Jerome Mormont is a character I find really interesting. I love the storyline. I really do think uh, he loves Danny. I know a lot of people debate about this. Some people say that he just likes Danny because she reminds him of his ex wife. I actually think he really cares for her because he's seen her go through all think about it. he's seen her go through the whole drogo thing with the dothraki the stuff with her brother in calf and whatnot he's seen her develop and grow into this strong young woman and i think he really thinks she'd make a great queen i think he really believes that but that's just my opinion i know a lot of people don't like his character um at all i'm not saying he should be with danny that would be a bit weird <laughs> <laughs> um, she's extremely young in the books, especially. I'm just saying, I like the character. I do think his feelings are real, actually. That's just my opinion. Um, see the house in the iron frame, definitely. So I've always liked his character and his, the storyline that he has. This kind of thing where he loves this girl, but he can't have her just because that would be ridiculous. And she can't, she could never accept that. We've got a court position, so we don't need another one. Uh, we'll let time go by. I don't know if Draw Mormont though and Tyrion do come to us. They might there might be an event for that. I'm not sure. Like I said, I've not actually played as her before. So we'll have to wait and see how these go. Queen of Marine. I've finally taken control of the last great slaver city. Marine has fallen to me, and now I rule from its great pyramid. However, 
Whilst I'm here learning to rule, my dragons have grown restless and wild, killing the livestock of my people. Now, actually, this is something that I always find a bit weird about Danny's storyline. Like, she's obviously, the girl obviously is very young, and she does want to help people. The fact she wants to help the slaves, we can all understand that. And obviously, she's faced a lot of difficulties through that. Um, but we'll talk about that in a second. But the thing here, it says here, is that, um, however, whilst I'm here learning to rule, I thought it was always an interesting thing. She always said that she didn't want to go to Westeros just yet because she needed to learn how to be a better queen and she couldn't just leave these people. That felt kind of careless to me. You know, she's kind of like playing with this this nation. These are nations. Slavers Bay is a group of nations. She's playing with these nations kind of society and stuff. And I'm not saying she, she's doing a bad thing. I'm just saying it's, it's a real interesting thing because like, I don't know. I thought that part of the story is a really interesting idea. I, I think it plays quite well, and how the reactions are towards her is very realistic. Um, I have imprisoned them, yet my unsullied could not capture Drogon, and now he has disappeared. I'm also informed that some of the former slave families have formed a group called the Sons of the Harpy, now attacking my people in the night and painting warnings in blood, threatening death to those who serve me. This is what I'm talking about, the Sons of the Harpy. The reaction of this is very interesting. These people have had this culture and tradition for hundreds, thousands of years. And she's coming along and just saying, stop it. I think it's obviously hard for them to accept. Um, and I think it's really nicely done in the storyline. Um, even if some other parts of the Marine and Slavers Bay story are not so great. But it's kind of, I guess, I guess some people might say she's very naive in thinking she can change all these these peoples and country um, in this way. But then again, you know, you also think she's doing the right thing. It's really hard to balance, you know, if she's doing the right thing or not. Um, I think a good example of kind of to put against her is Aegon Targaryen, Aegon the Conqueror. You know, Aegon the Conqueror, of course, when he took over Westeros, he kind of converted to their religion, the faith of the seven, took on a lot of their cultures and traditions, not all of them, but a lot of them, to kind of just, you know, show that he was able to, you know, give in to some of their things. So he seems like more like one of them. While Danny is just completely not wanting to show she's one of them. You know, closing the, the fighting pits and whatnot. Again, she thinks they're wrong and she's probably right. But it's interesting those comparisons of Aegon the Conqueror uh, being seen as a very successful conqueror. And giving some leeway to some of those things. And Danny not. But then again, obviously it's different. The slavers base up is a lot more horrible than the things Aegon was having to accept. So I guess that is maybe an unfair comparison. But yeah, I think it makes it... She's not perfect, and I think that's what makes her interesting. Uh, many slave cities have rallied with the Yunkai to bring me down. They have many hide sellsword legions and have acquired numerous allies and now march on Astapor to undo all that I have done there. So the Yunkai are going to attack Astapor with 16,000 men. Ah, oh, Astapor. Cleon the Butcher King. Yeah, not the not the greatest set of events happened in Astapor, was it? Um, again, it, she kind of left... Que it's, it's questionable whether what she's been doing in Slavers Bay is good or bad. Again, I like that. In the books, obviously, it's a lot more in-depth. Um, but I think that's a really interesting aspect of the story. Um, but yeah. The Valerian Freehold's politics was dominated by 40 families of great wealth, high birth, and strong sorceress ability. Known as Dragon Lords, they spoke the High Valerian language and had great skill in shape and stone. Incest and polygamy was a common practice among the blood of Old Valyria. I'm of the blood of Old Valyria. Actually, I should go and make some important characters. I'm just about to do that. Now, obviously, in the TV show, they look into that sort of stuff a lot less. Um, but it's still, you know, I think an interesting aspect of the character and her learning. But is that fair on the people that live there or that chaos? Is she actually getting more people killed? And will it actually change anything? I, I'm going to stop talking about that because I'm going to get into a massive thing. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Has she been doing the right thing in Slaver's Bay? Um, Duran Martel, make an important character, of course. Um, what's he doing? He's doing nothing right now. We, of course, have everyone's favorite grinding teeth king, Lord Paramount Stannis Baratheon. We also have a very important character here who some people might not know if they've only watched the TV show. This is Lord Aegon of Essos, a young boy claiming to be the son of Rhaegar Targaryen. Is it true? We have no idea. Could he be a fake? Some people say he's a fake. Some people say he's truly the son. Some people think, in theories, that maybe he's a Blackfire. 
There's definitely some good leeway to say maybe he's a Blackfire. Definitely. Definitely some foreshadowing, possibly. But it's an interesting storyline nonetheless, and he's attacked the Stormlands to try and claim the Iron Throne for his own. Mace Tyrell, of course, fighting off the Ironborn right now. And little Tommen Lannister on the throne. So many things going on right now. It's Westeros is pretty crazy, but we'll get there shortly. But we need to keep an eye on them. Cersei Lannister, everyone's favourite, lovable. She, she's just she's so lovable, of course, isn't she? Everyone loves her. No, everyone hates her. have to say, if I remember correctly, uh, in my stream I did when I did Danny, she Danny actually became a lesbian. And when we took over Westeros, all the comments were telling me to go and... Uh, you know, basically rape Cersei Lannister because she was in our jail cell. And uh, we did that. So basically, uh, Danny and Cersei were having a love affair in prison. I'm, I'm assuming Danny was the, the dominant one, seeing as, you know, Cersei Lannister was a captive. Very weird set of events there. And of course, we need Jon Snow. Ah, you know nothing, Jon Snow. You know nothing. And uh, yes, Roos Bolton, the, the kindly, cute, and just adorable rogue, Roos Bolton. No, of course, I don't think anyone's ever said any of those words about Roos Bolton. We need an advisor. Let's make one of Dothraki. Grey Worm. Let's make Grey Worm one of the advisors. I think that makes sense. Oh, Master of Laws. Master of Laws. Let's make this guy. There we go. So we've got all those now as special interest characters. That means we'll be able to see what's going on over there. Just in case we need to know certain things, you know. We need to know what's going on over in Westeros. I'm going to rule them one day. We need to know who's dying, who's winning, who's king, who's queen. Whatever. Uh, my vassal, Magister Hizdar, Zalorak, uh, my future husband, technically, probably, has requested that Master Skahaz um, should be sworn to him rather than me directly. Impress him with vague promises, yes. That's what Danny would do. She probably does not care so much for this. We just impress him. Say she will, but she never will. How's our little Drogon? Ah, Rago, son of Drogo. The stallion that could have mounted the world. Through staged war games and large scale exercises, I feel confident I can master one of the main military disciplines. Which one would Danny? I feel like Danny would choose heavy infantry or cavalry. Cause she's gonna be, she's gonna ride a, she's not riding a dragon right now though. Let's go for heavy infantry, I guess. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the unsullied count as. I should probably check that. Do they count as heavy infantry? There seems to be a lot of light infantry. Yeah, they're probably more light infantry. Yeah, and there's a lot of special units. Uh, unsullied, merely pursue skirmish. It doesn't really say. Okay, uh, Lord Commander Jon Snow's declared. His war for dawn against the White Walkers. So Jon Snow is decided to go out to fight the White Walkers. He actually has something in his treasury. Ooh, Dragon King. Being a history of House Targaryen from exile to Upper Phosis with a consideration of the life and death of dragons. There's a picture of Beleriand the Black Dread done in coloured inks in the book. The Jade Compendium. Pretty. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay. So he's declared one of them. The White Walkers of 12,000 men. Jon Snow, you're in trouble. You're going to need some allies. Hopefully we can get there one day and save Westeros. One day we'll be there, Jon. You've got Ant Lavelle and the Lower Frostfangs to help. That's that's not going to be enough, Jon. Jon, oh, you've got Hard Home helping as well. Oh, no. Travelers and merchants bring word that a sorcerer, Lord, claiming to be the Yellow Emperor from a dynasty fallen for a thousand years, has launched an invasion of the Golden Empire of Yai Tai. Okay, 8,000 men. So there's now an invasion of Yai Tai. <laughs> we have enough things going on over in Westeros. We don't need things going on over here as well. Though it looks as though the Azur Emperor has 23,000 men. He's probably okay. He's probably okay. And it looks as though the Blackwoods, the siege of Blackwood has fallen... And Tom and Lannister has him in jail. Oh, no, he's been released. He's been allowed to bend the knee, it seems. Well, that's nice. That's not too bad. Let's get back to Marine. How is Yunkai doing? And Astapor. So there we go. 
They are defeated. Yunkai's declared Junkish war to enslave Marine on Queen Daenerys Stormborn. So now Yunkai has set its sights upon us. Oh, wow. Those men just literally appeared in my lands. Uh, luckily, we had enough men there. There's 8,000 men popping over here. That was kind of <laughs> unlucky, but they've declared war on us uh, with their allies joining in as well to try and re enslave marine but we can't we can't let my children suffer we can't leave them here and we defeated them luckily looks like we didn't lose too many men either but yeah we can't let my people suffer we must fight maybe i should attack these guys while they're over here let's go attack them okay let's get our best men in charge we have enough do i have a bodyguard i did put a bodyguard didn't i yeah we did we put of course bella was the strong and bows and sell me Okay, who are our best men to take charge? Grey Worm, take the center. Balwaz, take the side. And Grileo, or Hero, the sky, is also a eunuch, former slave. Holy warrior. Hero, you go. Oh, I remember Hero now, actually, yeah. Oh, I remember him, actually, yeah. Okay, I remember it now. Let's go attack these guys. Is this, this is just Valerian Road. I see what other allies, okay. Let's try and kill as many as we possibly can. Sadly, we don't have dragons right now. Uh, Drogon and the other dragons, I guess, just aren't big enough. But yeah, Slaver's War. After their slaughter of the freed men of Astapor, the armies of Yunkai have gathered outside the colored brick walls of Marine. Beside them stand the legions of Nugis and fighting men from across Slaver's Bay. Only the Lazarene have answered our call for aid. The, the, the shepherd people from over here. Um, whilst the second sons and their captain have betrayed us. Brown Ben Plum, how dare you? I fought him an ally. I fought wrong. I would let my dragons devour him. Now, actually, personally, I quite like the character of Brown Ben Plum. I'm hoping the books have a bit more to do when it comes to Tyrion and stuff. We'll have to wait and see. Um, obviously, in the TV show, he's not in it at all, but yeah. I, I, the Plum family, very interesting little pieces of information we have of him. I don't know, I like it. Um, Jaro has arrived from Carth, pleading that I leave Slaver's Bay, and to entice me to do so has offered up 13 warships. Perhaps it is time I leave Slaver's Bay. Westeros will solidify if I don't act quickly, but I cannot leave my children to die. Now, obviously, most people probably want me to go to Westeros. <laughs> when people have been obviously reading the books and watching TV show, people always would complain saying, when is she going to Westeros? And so for that, we're going to have to stay. We can't let these people die. Danny would not allow it. Again, like I said before, in the future, maybe we will play an alternative uh, playthrough as Danny when we'll make some different decisions. But for now, we're keeping to her decisions. So we're going to stay here to protect our people and fight against these enemies. We have to. Um... Thinking about it, actually, the first book came out like 20 years ago. People have waited 20 years to see Danny go the Westeros. <laughs> That's insane when you think about it. Uh, I spared the Yunkai before. I will not make that mistake again. It is clear I must leave for home. No, we will not make the mistake again. We will stay here and fight. Um, this girl has arrived. So all the people from Marine, some of their children arrived at our court. We're going to have to raise some more men. Okay, we've got these people. Now, deaths of freedmen and unsullied continue to grow nightly, and several former free slave women have been raped by the sons of the harpy before having their throats slit open. Those disgusting barbarians. I had taken the children of several Miranese families as dub of dubious loyalty as cupbearers in name, but hostages in truth. In hopes that they would stop the killing. The killings only continue though. Kill the hostages. I will not harm the innocent children. I don't think she would. I, I don't. If, I can't remember what exactly what she did. I don't think she did. It doesn't seem her character to kill children. Um, she definitely likes to serve justice. Um, she can be quite ruthless in that regard. For example, when she hangs the uh, some of the masters and stuff. It's quite horrible actually. But I'm not sure she'd do this. So we'll do that. We will not ha we're not going to kill children, but these damn harpies, we can't leave this place. Now what to do? We could march onto Yunkai before their allies get here, 
It's probably the best thing to do. No matter what I was doing or where I was, Prendel always seemed to find me, but seemed tongue-tied and shy. I was alone in the library, reading when he finally got the courage to talk to me. So we got all these kids now running around my pyramid. You are so sweet. I like you too. He becomes infatuated with me. I, I think she's quite good with kids, yeah. Yeah, she's gonna be she's gonna be nice and polite to him. When guests arrive, my courtier Prendel is the first to greet them and shower them with questions. Um, yeah, she would like that, I think. Uh, he's impressing everyone with his sensible choices and great capacity for self-restraint. Uh, life, yeah, she likes temper, I think. And here we go. Now this, if we were doing an alternate scenario, this is the one probably where I would try to pick something different. This is why one of the ones I think is the most interesting proposals and what ifs that was presented to Danny when she was a Marine. But we're going to end this part here and we'll see what this event says next time. The sun's sun. I'll see you then.